Good morning. morning. Welcome to All Saints on the second Sunday of Advent. We're glad you're here. If you're visiting with us today, you got a packet as you came in. The outer part are the announcements. Inside is the service leaflet and the scripture readings. Everything you need to follow the service is in the service leaflet. The words of the service are there. The service music is there. But you will need hymnals for the hymns. And today we are using mostly the 1982 hymnal, which you just used. It's indicated by the letter H on the hymn board. And the letter W indicates the green wonder, love, and praise hymnal. And those are in the pew racks in front of you or under your chairs. When it's time for communion, everyone is welcome to receive the sacrament here. Instructions on how to do that are found in the leaflet when we get to that part of the service. And now before we continue, I'd like to dismiss the children to Sunday school and Maya will lead them out. And we continue on the front panel of your service leaflet. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. with you. you. Let us pray. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation, give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. A shoot shall come out of the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. 
the cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the wean child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on my holy mountain. For the earth will be the full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. The word of the Lord. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, so that by steadfastness and by the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus, so that together you may with one voice Glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another, therefore, just as Christ has welcomed you, for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the circumcised on behalf of the truth of God, in order that he might confirm the promises given to the patriarchs, and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, Therefore, I will confess you among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. And again he says, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, 
and let all the peoples praise him. And again, Isaiah says, The root of Jesse shall come, the one who rises to rule the Gentiles. In him the Gentiles shall hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Lord to you, Lord in those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then the people of Jerusalem and all Judea were going out to him, and all the region along the Jordan, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers! Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. This is the gospel of the Lord.
That wasn't the emergency warning system that means the end of the world is coming, is it? I grew up in the 60s. That's a very scary sound to me. <laughs> Let us pray. Gracious God, grant us always to seek the truth. Come whence it may, cost what it will. Amen. It's that time of year again. For most people, that time of year again means the holiday season. It means Christmas trees and colored lights and Santa Claus and jingle bells. It means a season that begins sometime in mid-November now, Halloween, somewhere there, and ends promptly at New Year's Day when everything gets put away and thrown to the curb. It means a time of celebrating and eating and drinking and rushing here and rushing there, and it means using words like joy and love and peace on earth and goodwill to all y'all. Yet for us, in the Episcopal Church, that time of year again also means Advent. It means a season of openness and silence. It means a season that is blue, not red and green. It means hymns and scripture readings that speak of a much larger sort of Jesus than the one we find lying in the manger at Christmas. An eternal Jesus Christ who comes in judgment at the end of days. Or an adult Jesus of Nazareth who comes to teach and to preach and to die and to rise. It means using words like repentance and judgment and winnowing and preparing. So living as we do between these two very different seasons, I am grateful for today's gospel lesson. Because even though it's rough and kind of daunting, I mean, who wants to be part of a brood of vipers, right? The gospel lesson gives us a lens that covers both of these seasons, the holiday season and the Advent season. Because today, like the people of Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region along the Jordan, we too leave behind that world, our daily world. The world of buying and selling and hustle and bustle and wish lists and school concerts. And we leave that holiday season behind and we come here instead to church. We come into the wilderness of Advent. It's quiet here in the wilderness of Advent. There's not a lot of jingle jangle. It's spare. It's stripped down. There's not a lot of distractions. There's room to think. To think about God and to think about the state of our own souls. And here in this blue-hued wilderness, we come face to face with a big bearded man, and it is not Santa Claus. No, it's John the Baptist. And he has a message for all of us. Turn around, says John the Baptist. You're going the wrong way. Turn around because something big is coming. Turn around and get ready for it. Look, the kingdom of the heavens is coming. Turn around, won't you? The Baptist is trying to get our attention. Turn around, he says. You notice I say turn around and not repent. That's because turn around is a more compelling and accurate translation of the Greek word metanoia, which our Bible translates as repent. And anyway, I'd rather say turn around instead of repent because repent has so much baggage in our modern context. It's so loaded. It sparks images of hellfire preachers outside Wells Hall. It fuels feelings of shame and insufficiency. And it makes us think we should just kind of look down at our toes in humiliation and just feel very, very bad about ourselves. But the word metanoia, the word translated here as repent, really means this. You are facing the wrong way and you are going the wrong direction. Repent, metanoia, means that now you have a wonderful opportunity to turn around, to face the right way, and to start walking in the right direction. 
So if you think of John the Baptist's summons as a call to turn around rather than to repent, then metanoia is a pretty awesome thing. Because I think we do all want to go the right way. And I think all of us would be pretty happy to turn around and head in the right direction when we discover that we have lost our way. Trouble is, most of the time, it's hard to see what direction we are actually heading. It's hard to know if we're really facing the right way and going the right direction. I think what happens is that most of us try to do both things at the same time most of the time. We face the wrong way but try to look in the right direction, or we look in the right direction all the while we're walking towards the wrong one. It reminds me of this lovely old couple who came to stay at our motel. When I was a teenager, my family owned a small motel on the beach on the west coast of Florida, and we saw many interesting people who came to be our guests. These particular people were farmers from western Michigan, and they came to our motel for, I think, what was maybe the only vacation they had ever taken in their whole lives. So they were there in Florida, on the beach, and on their very first evening, they walked hand in hand onto the sand to watch the sun set into the Gulf of Mexico. And there were these large concrete walls jutting out into the sea. They were perpendicular to the shore, and they were put there because they were try to, supposed to keep the sand from eroding. And the man and the woman sat down on one of those walls, but they sat with their backs to the sunset. Seriously, they faced south as the sun was setting to the west, and they watched the sunset kind of over their right shoulders. And no one in my family ever figured that out, figured out why for 20 long minutes while it, the sun was going down, the couple watched the sunset facing backwards. But that's what this time of year feels like to me. And it's what the summons to the wilderness of Advent feels like to me. It feels like I'm sitting on a wall facing one way and just sort of turning my head to the light. But the light deserves more than just a portion of my attention. It deserves more than just a portion of your attention. That light is summoning us to stand up and turn around and face the right direction away from the kingdom of this world, toward the kingdom of heaven that is already saturating us with light and love and justice and redemption and grace and peace and joy and all the beautiful words that this season lifts up for us. If we would only face it and claim it for our own, if we would only order our lives this way in this direction toward the true light, which enlightens everyone, which is coming into the world. Those people who went into the wilderness to get baptized by John, they got turned around. On the banks of the Jordan River, their lives were reoriented away from darkness toward the light, away from sin toward salvation, away from despair toward joy, away from the smallness of self toward the immense and infinite love of God. You can't do something like that half-heartedly. You can't do it like a glance over your shoulder, considering the light for a few moments before turning back to face the business of the world. You have to go all in. That's what the people who answered John's summons did. They made a complete about face and offered their wholehearted commitment to preparing the way of the Lord. And they did it even as they turned for home because, you know, they had to go back home eventually. They had to go back to Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region along the Jordan. But when they went, they headed home in a new direction with a new purpose, as new people, as God's people, as 
kingdom bringers and kingdom bearers, as way makers and winnowers, as dancers and dreamers, as people with a new way of being in the world, a way of being that was coherent with the purposes of God. We also, we all will also go back out into the world. We can't stay here in the Advent wilderness for long. The holiday season is still out there with all its delights and all its demands. There are presents to wrap and parties to attend and carols to sing and so much work that needs to be done before Christmas comes. But the question really, the question that John lays out for us here in the wilderness in these few moments before we go back and get all caught up in the season again, the question is this. Will we go back into our lives as turned around people or not? Is this moment right now, is this moment in the Advent wilderness, is this just a pause in a too busy life? Is this just a moment to catch our breath? Is this just a moment to glance over our shoulder for a moment or two and consider the possibility that the light of Christ is bursting into the world and then turn away and go back to business as usual? Or can we go back into our lives recalibrated to the inbreaking kingdom of God, reoriented? to the mission of Jesus Christ, revived and revitalized with the true, deep, real spirit of the season, the grace and power of God that is working in us right now to make that longed-for love and joy and peace and goodwill to all y'all a reality. Can we do that? Make it a reality. Not just for a few weeks in December, but every day in our families, in our workplaces, in our city, in our nation. So as we wait here in the Advent wilderness, John lays the question out today for me and for you and for us. Which direction will you face when you leave here today? Which way will you be headed next? Amen. And now let us proclaim the ancient faith of the church using the words of the Nicene Creed at the top of panel two. We believe in one God, Father.
prayers of the people. Creator God, we praise you for the gift of earth's lengthening shadows, slowing our bodies, quieting our minds, and inviting space within to conceive the mystery of Christ. O oh God, expand in us an eyes wide open sight like the prophets had, that we may behold your vision for our hurting world. Enliven in us the caring awareness of Jesus, that each of us may be light shining in the darkness. Gentle us to a pureness of heart like Mother Mary, that we may love unconditionally. Open in us a generosity of spirit like Joseph, that the communities we build together may be cradles of welcome, soft enough for a child to rest. Strengthen in us, O oh God, a bold faith that in our living we may be signs of hope in your coming reign of peace. Hear, O oh God, the needs of Howard, Chris, Nell, Diane, Mary, Catherine, Al, Marty, Tamara, Emily, Barbara, Rebecca, Folu, Dawn, Pat, Dixie Lee, Kevin, Rosemary, and Tammy, for Akir and Makir and their families, and receive the prayers of your people gathered here. Bless, O God, all souls rejoicing in eternal life. We give thanks for flowers beautifying our altar, given in the celebration of Joe and Senia's anniversary and their love of their All Saints family. Accept, O oh God, our gratitude for the wonders of life and for the joy, joyful expectation of Christ being born in us. Hasten, O oh God, the coming of your kingdom and grant that we, your children who now live by faith, May with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, 
Have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Please greet one another. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning. Um, I'm Sarah Miller, and I'm the vestry person of the day. The vestry is the governing board of our church. If you have any questions about All Saints, please feel free to ask me. I'm here for you. Uh, Here are some important announcements for today. If you're visiting with us today, please fill out one of these visitor cards, and they're found in the pew racks in front of you. Uh, You may place it in the offering plate as it goes by, and we'll send you some information about our church. This is the only offering we ask of our guests today that you let us say thank you for being with us. Uh, Right after the service, join us for the alternative gift market downstairs in the room directly beneath us. Just follow the either set of stairs or take the elevator all the way down, and there's no regular coffee hour today. Um, The uh, Christmas Mart um, is today until 2 p.m., and you can also enjoy a delicious soup and baked goods luncheon. The Advent calendars are here. You can pick up your Advent calendar poster at the back of the church or an interactive children's Advent calendar. And glorious Christmas flowers will adorn the church beginning on Christmas Eve. Uh, Christmas flower envelopes are on the table under the name badges. Envelopes returned to the office by December 18th will receive acknowledgement on the Christmas bulletins. Thank you for your attention. There are also many announcements in there for families, including family fun days and family fun nights and the Epiphany pageant. So if you have children, I recommend you take the leaflet home and read it deeply. And now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as an offering and a sacrifice to God.
we continue with the Eucharistic prayer as it is printed in your leaflet. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, Put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with the blessed Virgin Mary, St. Joseph, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as
as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Receive who you are, become what you see, the body and blood of Christ.
Please stand as you are able and join me in sending forth our Eucharistic visitors. Pam and Neil, in the name of this congregation, I send you forth bearing these holy gifts, that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body, because we all share one bread and one cup. The post-communion prayer is found on the last panel of your leaflet. Together let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Life is short, and we do not have too much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel the way with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And may the blessing of the one who made us and who loves us and walks the way with us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon you and those you love dearly this day and always. Amen. Amen.